independence of our nation. That we begin the festivities with a prayer of thanks to Almighty God that made it possible for us to have a free nation. Would you please bow your head with me in prayer? My dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the abundant blessings that you have allowed us to have. We thank you that our forefathers were so strongly dedicated to you that they believed in the principles of service to you when they established this, our great nation. I pray that you would be with us today, that the things we do might be pleasing in your sight, that the things we do today might be honoring to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What now?
over to May and Idella. A home was built around 1909 at the cost of $1,001.01.
Jim was here whenever uh, the Shutton family bought the house in 1920. So they don't know how long he was here before. This. And it originally had a dome roof on the top of it. Um, the farm originally was on this panel, and uh, the brake track was to the north. And the occupant was to go down at that time, was to the north and move to the near friend John Sutton, but the occupant. And the occupant was shooting for him. Yes, not getting it. Yes, not getting it. Oh, 
I'll tell you something about Oh, you mean like that right there? What? Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. Or Him outside, you're gonna lose all your <laughs> baseball. Travis, there's some baseballs. They're putting them in that basket. And those kids, those little kids have got them. I brought four out here. It, it should be. Well, he pissed well for me that last ball game of the state. Oh, he did? Man, he pissed well. <laughs> That's it.
planing when we take the top part off that they did. So they added on, this is the original roof line that you can see here. The part to the west uh, was added on later and it is uh, was added on as a kitchen and a bathroom dining room. Like the trellis is part of the original house that the Campbells had and so it, you'll see it in the photo too so look for it when you look in the photo. And um, the house has been past an older lived here. They also took in other children who couldn't go to school because they lived too far out in the country and they didn't have buses. And so they would stay here and help with farm work, housework, or whatever, they took in boys and girls. My dad happened to be one of those people who got to stay here with them, and they were wonderful people. Of course, they raised Ed and Janelle, their own children, and Ed and Linda live in the house now. And they have a son who just graduated from no, the that, This house isn't there. Well, he said there's about really a house there. being there, but he might live somewhere else. Okay, this is, this is Noah's dishes. He said you're going too fast. Oh, he went out with boys. <laughs> These are Manoa's dishes. This is a house, a picture of the house. Don't know how long ago. The octagon is in it. Right here, you can see that it still had the original roof on it. And over here, you can see where it's flat. And this one was touched about 15 years ago. You can see the trellis, which is here. And... She got ill. There used to be across that wall over there was a closet, and whenever she would have to go to the restroom, she would have to go out this door, through the parlor, through the living room, and then around to the bathroom. So they have done away with that and made an opening and put storage out there. Uh, the bedspread, the quilt, Dixie made this, and it took her four years to make it. And this is another part of an old washstand. Make that trip once a day, huh? Yes. Yeah. 
Needless to say, I doubt if they made too many trips. It's really pretty. This is, the, uh -huh. this is the original mm -hmm. bathtub and lavatory that was when the house was built. Behind, the, there's a little door right over here at the end of the bed. There's storage all along this wall and all along this wall. The uh, books were here. Uh, there's stuff stored in the window box. The uh, brush and comb set was a Christmas gift uh, for December the 25th, 1912. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the door is a cake, one of the cakes. The stuff. <laughs> That's all right, go right ahead. This is all. Uh, this is their quilting rocker. It has no arms so that they were free to work and, and make their quilt. Uh, the chest here was handmade. Uh, the bedroom furniture was originally here. The quilt uh, belongs, uh, Joe's mother made it and it had some of her favorite scriptures on it. She hand quilted it. The little door right here is the neat little door that I would love to go through. It goes between the house and the porch and leads all the way around to the front of the house. Oh, is that right? Yeah, like oh, a secret yeah. passageway. And oh, I would yeah. love to go through it. <laughs> <laughs> Not an address you would.
number four. We got one eight. Turn it over, Bubba. Turn it over, Bubba. Number four. Number four. Can you hold that? Let's put it right there, okay? Anybody else? All of them? Can you roll to three? Thank you, Marcy. Good old Golden Rule. 
Doodle Day. Here we have Amy Meek and Krista Body. Amy is the daughter of Doug and Janice Meek and is stepping real cute in this black and white cotton print dress. She's already dressed up with her. Where's your purse? She's supposed to have a purse ready for Sunday school. <laughs> and then we have adorable little Krista Body, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Wags, Michael Body, and Kathy.
The most original. Yeah. did a super job and the judging was hard and we'd like to thank the judges uh, Dan Verser and, and also Larry Malcolm were the judges and of all these contestants there were three categories one for the most original and that would be for one who looks like the turn of the century uh, the other category was the best overall and then the third category was the best effort the one who tried the best but didn't do as well so we have three winners I'd like to call their names I believe they're all up here. I need uh, Robert Russell. Robert won. Uh, so you won best overall, didn't you? Yeah, Robert Russell. And Bob Browning. Where's Bob? Bob Browning. Bob, where are you? There you come. Bob, <laughs> one most original. <laughs> and the third one for the best effort was Greg Evans. <laughs> is Karen Albers and Glenda Berkey based on originality. I don't know if they're here tonight, but I'll get it to them. Oh, Vivian 
Vivian Wilson. I know she can't come up the stairs. But Vivian came here when she was seven. Is this right, Vivian? She can't hear me. She came here March the 8th. 19 and 7, and she's 91 years old. And this is Vivian Wilson. We're proud to have her in our community, too. She was born in Spring Hill, Nebraska. November 30th, 19 and November the 30th, 19 and 1. Okay, we're proud to have Dorothy too. Pretty soon we're going to have to sing that song, Shall We Gather at the River, because it's getting hot now. <laughs> this is Lucy Walker. How long have you been here? Lucy's been here since 1919. We're real proud of Lucy too. <laughs> She be 90 years old in November. When she drinks that coffee, she can think of all of us. We're proud of her, too. Now, we got... Uh, now, now... I, I didn't... You better, hold, you better hold your breath. <laughs> okay, this is Ruby Charles. Okay, she was 85 in November. She's really dear to me in this community. I'm going to give her this cup. Okay, we got Leona here now. She's going to tell us how old we, she is. She's 84 and she said she was great.
ladies and gentlemen, the hearts are going again. to welcome you all out tonight. Uh, we'd like to thank the surrounding towns for coming out. Give them a round of applause. And a big thanks goes to all the citizens of Minko for all the work they've done. Give it up for the Minko citizens. Hey. Okay, I have a letter here from President George Bush. So I'm going to read it. To the citizens of Minko, Oklahoma, you have my warmest congratulations as you celebrate your 100th birthday anniversary. As you well know, Minko is more than a collection of buildings. It is more than a place on the map. From its earlier days, it has nurtured the lives and accomplishments of and countless individuals. Individuals united through the years by a common love for the place they call home that deep sense of community or responsibility towards one's neighbor and the common good resonates through all cities and towns across America. It is one of our nation's greatest strengths. This milestone gives you a splendid opportunity to reaffirm that community spirit, taking just pride in the past and rededicating yourselves to the promise of a bright future. Barbara and I send you best wishes for a joyous celebration. God bless you, George Bush. everybody to stand. This is going to be a barbershop rendition of the national anthem and since this is Independence Day and Minko's 100th birthday we ask you to be especially quiet during the scene. Thank you. Oh, 